You don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you can eat some fry balls. What is going on, NASCAR Diecast collectors and Diecast reviewers on YouTube? This is Original Big Bry here, and I bring you guys with another episode of the NASCAR Diecast News here on YouTube. And, uh, guys, we got ourselves a lot of Diecast News to talk about, of course, on this new episode of the NASCAR Diecast News, with, of course, got to be your following, um, the newest NASCAR Diecast that have been released from our good friends at Plan B Cells and or, and or Casey Diecast, and also the local dealers. Um, all check uh, check them out as always, guys. Uh, highly encourage you guys to uh, go and shop at your local diecast dealers if you can. Mine, of course, in particularly is Lesher's Diecast, so uh, check them out. They have an eBay site as well, and uh, we also do got some new pre-orders as well. We're going to be talking about uh, a lot of uh, Darlington throwback cars, so that's uh, so the pre-order section is going to be uh, full with a lot of uh, newest. Don't the throwback cars, but we're gonna get on to that very shortly. And of course, an episode cannot end well with a couple of cancellations. So we do got some news cancellations that were just recently announced, and it's gonna be all here on the inside here on this episode. And also, we do got an exclusive photo for um, that has been trending as well, um, hinting on a car that is possibly going to make MOQ, and it is a four diecast. So we're gonna get into a more insight of that. And many more as the NASCAR Diecast News starts right now. But before we do that, guys, let's take a look back at last week's episode of the NASCAR Diecast News with its best selling diecast from NASCAR Diecast News 146. Alright everybody, so to kick off this new episode of NASCAR iCast News, we of course are going to get to your favorite, which is your newly released iCast from our good friends at Flame B Sales and our KC iCast. Uh, check them out as always. So we're going to get on to, um, of course we're going to start in um, numerical order by uh, year, and the first one is a classics car, it is a Kevin Harvick car. Uh, that he drove in 1998, I believe this was when he was in the uh, Bush Grand National Series, his Spears manufacturing car, uh, a one-of-a-kind that Lionel classic car that uh, Lionel is the only one to make so far, so it's pretty cool right there. And you can tell it's got that classic vibe because it's got the, the colored interior inside. Uh, if you guys do remember, you know, a lot of the classic cars back then, you know, um, race champions and all, and winter circles, and all those other classic companies they had a color chassis so really cool to see Lionel um, decided to do this with their classics line of course with the Kevin Harvick car um, I think this is definitely a must get for any Kevin Harvick fans out there of course I'm talking to my good friend PWP 2933 also known as Buddy Foley you guys know him as, as well as I do check him out he is an awesome guy by the way 
And um, yeah, that is really interesting right there. Next one, it is the start of genres of throwback cars, and this is one that actually has came out the latest, guys. I mean, uh, we did got shipping reports on this car, that is, was a, as this was an un, uh, an undefined uh, car. But uh, little did we know that this car did made MLQ, and it is Ricky Snell's Jr.'s 2015 Dawn's a throwback car um, for um, David Pearson's car. So it's got that David Pearson vibe to it. And what can I say, guys? This is a Dawn's throwback car that I would highly recommend getting, especially since it made MLQ. So that's really cool right there. Usually, a lot of Roush Fenway diecasts usually do not make MLQ, but since this was a very special Dawn's throwback car, I'm very honored to see that we did get this diecast produced as well. Uh, I believe uh, the 124 version should be coming out as well, possibly, or unless this is a 164 exclusive car, but who knows, but uh, definitely cool right there. I love the, uh, like I said, the David Pearson look on this. Uh, really, really nice tribute uh, to honor that 17 car. And the next one is not really too fancy and dandy. Uh, many Kyle Busch haters would probably would recognize this car. And it is Kyle Busch's 2015 M&M's pink car. So, you know, similar to all of his other m and schemes that he's had for the past couple of years, uh, you know, they always have a special paint scheme with Halloween, and now uh, for the month of October, they had a pink car as well. So, it's really cool right there, of course, to honor, you know, Susan G. Komen and uh, Breast Cancer Awareness on. So, um, yeah, you know, it's also uh, an accurate car because uh, this car was driven in the chase. So, it's got all the uh, chase. Um, contingencies on it which is really cool right there all the chase features so, yeah and the next one guys is probably the most highly anticipated throwbacks that we have been finally waiting for I know one of my good friends David Land on YouTube was really looking forward to get this and now uh, he will be pleased and many more of you other diecast fans because now uh, the two car pack set for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Kelly Arbor is finally available guys um, you know, no longer you guys uh, will have to, you know, shop on eBay to get that Dale Jr. car. Because if you guys do remember from last August, uh, Walmart had a promo. If you bought, like, um, if you bought, like, a, a, a big thing of, um, Vaveline, um, engine oil. Like a big, uh, quarter of it, I think. And you get, like, a free die guess with it. But now, guys, you can finally get this exclusive car. Plus, also, the Dawn is a throwback car. Uh, that is in honor with it. So, uh, so you got the original diecast, which is Kelly Arbros, and then you got Dale Jr.'s Johnson throwback car. So, a really, really nice two-pack car set. I'm so I was surprised seeing this packaging, but you know it's got that classic vibe of the classic packaging. So, um, kind of a cool step for Lionel. Although many people would love to see like a, a nice little collector case, like they did with the Batman vs Superman two-pack set. But um, I still like this packaging. I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, probably not the best to you know uh, take out of the package so I think for displays wise this might will be a really cool set to pick up but now we're gonna move on to the 2016 diecast which is always something to look forward to um, and I'm only gonna be reviewing the cars that look very um, that look uh, um, that are different unlike last year so diecast I'm gonna be excluding for this right here just to save a little bit of time so won't be reviewing too much on uh, the Casey King Great Clips car because um, uh, that's mostly the same as last year's and the past few years. Same thing with the Tony Stewart Co. 3 Associates and the Tony Stewart Rush Truck Center cars. Um, those cars have always been the same throughout the past couple years, so no really point of reviewing them if they're the same car. Uh, except all of them are on the EL mold, so I guess if that's something you like, then get those. But yeah, we're going to start off with the Mobile One cars, guys. If you guys do remember, a couple weeks ago, Tony Stewart released his Mobile One car. Same with the NASCAR Authentics as well, uh, for the most recent wave. But now we got Kevin Harvick's uh, Mobile One car and Danica Patrick's Mobile One car. And I have to say, um, Tony Stewart's is still my favorite, but Harvick is a close second. I mean, I, I, I kind of do. I still think Tony Stewart's uh, Mobile One car this year is still my favorite Mobile One car. Kevin Harvick's is all right. It's a different uh, feel to it, but just uh, I can't really um, admire these. Um, paint, I can't really admire Kevin Harvick's and Danica Patrick, especially Danica Patrick. Danica Patrick just looks really, really bland. The grade does not really work well with the car, and just it's an overall very bland-looking car. So I would probably pass on the Danica Patrick Mobile One car. But for the Kevin Harvick one, it's not too bad. You know, I think it's just still a good collector item for any Kevin Harvick out, any Kevin Harvick fans out there. A different, uh, a much more different car than like he drove um, in 2014 with this Mobile One car that he uh, 
raced at uh, Pocono with, I believe, in 2014. You guys remember that? It was like a white car um, with black in it. So, yeah, a much more different vibe to it. But overall, it's still a pretty decent looking car, I guess. Um, and we got a lot of new 88 die guess. Oh boy, fans are going to be going uh, tripping all over this. Um, we got um, the Daytona winner for the Xfinity Series, Chase Elliott. Okay, this is the car and the scheme that he did want in at the um, Daytona Xfinity race, uh, which was a very close call, especially um, with uh, what happened at the finish with him and Joey Logano. So um, I'm, de I'm guessing uh, if you guys do remember that memory, then this is the car to get right here. Even though I did got confir uh, confirmation that Lionel is going to have damage on the uh, race to win die guess. So um, that 124 is going to be looking really cool when that comes out. But um, for any 164 guys, this is probably your best bet right here. And you can always uh, make a nice race to win custom after all. as. Um, those are always pleasing right there, so uh, lots of possibilities with this car, so probably recommend getting it. Uh, it's similar to Dale Jr.'s Tax Slayer car. And speaking of Dale Jr., we do got um, his Helmets car, guys. I don't know if you guys know all the vibe with uh, Dale Jr. and Helmets, especially with his latest viral video he had with uh, the, what was that, uh, special sandwich he had. Uh, I'm not really going to say what it is, uh, because most of you guys probably already know what it is. <laughs> but. Uh, Yep, yeah, I mean, this car is basically the same as last year's. I probably could have passed on that, but it's Dale Jr. You know, we always got to talk about Dale Jr. because he is uh, one of NASCAR's uh, most popular drivers and so forth. And I still like this scheme, so, you know, it's uh, it's starting to grow on me, even though um, that slogan is still kind of uh, still kind of creepy. I mean, hell, I'm not quite sure what is uh, meant to say when they say squeeze more out. But anyways, moving on. Uh, the last car for the 164s are definitely, I think, the best for last. Uh, I know one of our good friends, um, Race Day 2016, uh, Kyler Moss, he, uh, he was at Texas last week and he got this car early, but now we have this car officially released into the public and all to the local diecast dealers and of course I blame sales. But Dale Jr.'s Exalta car, this is another pretty hype, a big hype for Dale Jr. cars. Um, as you guys probably know, I mean most of Dale Jr.'s diecasts this year are looking relatively different and I'm really liking that, especially uh, with um, the Exalta car because this car looks very similar to the Oreo uh, to the to his uh, Oreo Ritz car that he drove in 2002 or 2003 I think I think it's just two um, as I can tell by the bodies what they what, I, 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 I can tell like what, I, I, I believe that was in 2002 I believe uh, I, I'm sure um, I think PD, PD, uh, PWP 2933 will probably knows the answer to that but I believe it's somewhere in the mid 2000s for sure uh, uh, if you guys know what I'm talking about um, that's what this scheme is supposed to replicate, which is really cool. That's why I really have liked Dale Jr.'s diecast for this year, because they all have a nice little mean to it. So definitely a hardcore must to get this car, for sure. And 124s, I'm not really going to say too much about them. Um, so we do got, um, most of these cars are basically similar to, like, um, uh, some of the 164s that were released last last week are now in 124 scales, so like all the Harvick and... Danica Badger, Tony Stewart, so all those cars that were released in 164, and now to keep them 124 as well. But now we're going to get on to the newest pre-orders, guys, and we got, uh, man, a lot of good stuff to talk about for pre-order-wise. But right off the bat, guys, we're going to be talking about the Mountain Dew cars. There was a lot of hype for these Mountain Dew cars because if you guys do remember, um, um, let's see here, Henrik Motorsports decided to um, not sponsor Diet Mountain Dew anymore, I believe. They're now back to the classic Mountain Dew um, sponsorship, so a lot of people were definitely expecting a huge change. Uh, I don't know if these are official, of uh, the Fish Mountain Dew cars, or these are promotions, possibly, but who knows, guys. I think these might be the Fish Mountain Dew cars, but... Uh, who knows yet? We still might get a regular Mountain Dew cars. But anyways, guys, uh, we got three different drivers driving for Mountain Dew this year. Of course, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Chase Elliott, and Casey Kane. And all of them are representing um, a different flavor of Mountain Dew, especially coming up at Richmond. So all these three schemes you see right here as I release a promo pick, these are these cars are all available right now at lineupracing.com for pre-order in 164 and 124. And... Right off the bat, let's see, we got Casey Kane promoting the uh, Mountain Dew Pitch Black car. You guys do remember, this car looks very similar to a, to the car that Jeremy Mayfield drove back in uh, 2005 when he promoted the uh, Mountain Dew car as well. So, I like the little classic vibe that car has, but I would say it is my least favorite because it does look a little dull. 
And uh, next one it is, of course, Baja Blast makes a return. It is Chase Elliott's number 24 Baja Blast car. And I'm digging this. And, you know, I kind of like the colors. You know, I mean, um, I kind of question all the designs so far this year for uh, the 24 car. But this one is starting to grow on to me. You know, I really do like the colors that this car represents. And I think it um, definitely shows a good vibe for the Baja Blast scheme. But I'm really admiring um, Dale Jr.'s um, um, Mountain Dew Dew Cision. I don't even think that is a real word, but I guess Mountain Dew likes to point that out. But, um, yeah, I mean, this car is pretty cool, too. You know, it's got that Mountain Dew green look to it. And, uh, of course, um, I think this car is uh, also running at Richmond as well, as this is um, what the name of the context is, Dew Cision. So tell me what you guys think of these cars. Uh, which car do you think will win or... Or tell me which flavor is uh, better for Mountain Dew. Do you guys prefer Pitch Black or Baja Blast? Uh, I don't think I've had Pitch Black, so I probably will go for Baja Blast, but I'll probably have to give that out a try and see what I can vote for myself. But now we're also going to get on to the Dawn to Throwback Cars. They are slowly now making their return. And, oh my god, guys. Uh, I talk, we talked about last week how um, Reed Smith is doing a Alan Kawiki. Um, Dawn to throwback car. Well, we got some uh, we got some cars right here to show you for Dawn to throwback cars. And first off, I'm gonna go a little out of the order, but I'm gonna show you guys the order of when these cars uh, officially came out. And the first one that we did got a word of was, uh, ironically, Ricky Snouse Jr. As you guys do, we know we did talk about him on a couple minutes ago with the Sierra Pearson car. Now this year, he is going to be representing Daryl Waltrip's car from the 1970s. So if you guys do remember this car right here, this is a really cool Jonathan throwback car. Um, I probably still admire last year's, but you know, I do like the tribute that this car has for the DW as well. So, um, really hoping that this car does come out a little more earlier, unlike last year's. But, um, you know, I'm looking forward to see this car. I think it's going to be a really, I think it's going to be a really, um, cool Don's throwback car. Probably it's up there in my top five so far. So, um, that's really cool right there. And the next one, Stuart Haas Racing announced, uh, three of the four cars for the Don's throwback cars. And, uh, let's see, the first one, um, this one was kind of a surprise, especially with the Bush sponsorship. Um, let's just say we have another Kale Yarbrough tribute scheme. And it is going to be um, for Kevin Harvick, guys. So this car, probably another one of my favorites. I think it is really up there. Probably in the top three, basically. I, it's really up there, guys. Um, um, my favorite Donaldson Throwback cars for this year. Man, this car looks nice. Ever since they announced the Bush sponsorship, I knew that this was going to be a Donaldson Throwback um, idea for sure. So... Really cool that Kevin Harvick and Bush are going to be, and Bush Beer are going to be, you know, uh, taking advantage of this scheme and bringing it back to life at Darlington and um, at, at and Labor Day weekend. So that is going to be a really cool part to see under lights at Darlington. And the next two are kind of disappointing because they don't really have a Darlington throwback vibe to it. And first off, right at the back, guys, Dan Capatcher's quote unquote Darlington throwback car for um, Nature's Bakery. My, oh my, I mean, I usually don't talk crap about cars, but my, oh my, this car makes the Lady in Black car that she ran last year look good. I mean, some people actually like this car, but to be honest, guys, um, can I just say, just, I don't know, it looks like, the, it looks like, um, how do I put this? It looks like the, it looks like the paint scheme looks like an ocean taking a crap. <laughs> I mean, I know that sounds kind of ironic and very out of the ordinary, but I don't know. I'm not really liking this scheme, and I don't really see why it has a darn to throwback vibe to it. I mean, I mean, I get it. Not all cars are going to be in the darn to throwback car, but I don't really consider why they are promoting this as a throwback. You know, um, if you guys can tell me if it's a throwback or not, but I don't really think so. Similar to Kurt Busch's car, which I'm really disappointed for this year. If you guys remember last year, they did a Don't Throwback car for um, Haas' first uh, scheme. Uh, of course, uh, that was also for Jason Leffler, Mike Bliss, and all the other original drivers from Haas. Uh, but this one was a really different scheme. And I don't mind it, but I still don't see that Don't Throwback vibe to it as well. So right now, I'm only digging at Kevin Harvick's, but I don't know. I mean, I hopefully we get a... I, I'm hoping right now that we get a good Tony Stewart car. I mean, the last thing we want to know, you know, is uh, not do a fail last year with the Exalta Rainbow Warrior car, which did not run at Darlington. 
So I'm hoping we're going to get something in the back for Tony Stewart. Maybe a, a Home Depot car or possibly an Office Depot car. Hopefully Home Depot, I mean, but I don't know if they're ever going to return NASCAR, so we're just going to have to wait and see for that. But uh, for Donuts and Throwbacks, that is really cool right there. And I say the best for last right there. Um, this one was also the worst kept secret for Donuts and Throwbacks. Um, I mean, I think uh, similar to it's Kevin Harvick's KO Yobro Donuts and Throwback. Uh, this one right here, like I said, worst kept secret. We all knew this car was coming, especially with Dale Jr. driving his nationwide car this year. Uh, Dale Jr. is bringing the Grey Ghost back. Um, after the re after the recent passing for Buddy Baker last year, um, if you guys do remember, he his original nationwide scheme for this year is honor of Buddy Baker. So I was not surprised seeing that this car was going to make a return. However, though, I felt like that this car could have represented Chase Elliott more because um, if you guys remember Buddy Baker did sponsor Napa back then. But um, I, I I'm real it's kind of cool that I see we're seeing Dale Jr. take the Grey Ghost car back again. You guys remember in 2009 and 2008 he did um, a National Guard scheme as well for this, for the Great Ghost. So, really cool um, to see Dale Jr. is taking that vibe again. And uh, so, um, that's cool right there. I still probably prefer his last year's Babylon car. Uh, but th this one I think is going to look nice in diecast form. But uh, that's going to wrap it up for the pre-orders, guys. And now we're going to get on to the cancellations, which this. Oh boy, guys. Um, we do got some disappointing cars that we did got canceled for sure. So we're gonna start off right at the back, guys. Another Austin Dillon car, his Triple A car for this year. It was canceled in both scales. And this one, I was kind of disappointed, but you know, it is Austin Dillon, and that's me. People are not really feeling the Dillon vibe, so I highly understand right there. I think this is probably like the third, third car or fourth car. Um, I think it is the third car that is now officially canceled because of. Uh, his Dow and Telly Fresh car, his American Alpha car was canceled, and then all the Ty Dillon cars for this year were canceled as well. So, not like I said, guys, it's not been a really good year for um, any Dillon fans out there for Austin and, and Ty Dillon. So, um, so it was really surprising to see that this car was getting canceled. The next one it is another Cole Custer car, which is really disappointing because I do see a lot of people do admire Cole Custer, but his diecast sales aren't really showing it that well. Um, his truck diecast for this year was canceled, but also his first Xfinity debut car is going to be canceled in both scales, which is very disappointing. He's making his debut this week at Richmond, and seeing that this car got canceled at this time, which got to be a bummer. Heck, when you got to um, when that happens right there, that's just very unfortunate for Cole Custer. Um, and another disappointing diecast. Um, Probably we're not going to have, I mean, for now, guys, this is another driver that's not going to need any for this year. Not that I know of because of licensing issues, issues with 5 Iron Energy. Clint Boyer's uh, uh, design car um, has been canceled in both scales as well. Man, I just hate it when both when both scales get canceled because you're basically screwed either way um, for die cast collectors. But, yeah, this is pretty disappointing right here, especially for H. Scott Motorsports. Seeing uh, Clint Boyer is... Uh, that we're not going to have a Clint Boyer car this year, which is very unfortunate. I mean, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get something in the bag because right now Boyer fans are pretty screwed right now, especially uh, with this recent move with this uh, with the team. But he does goes to he's going to be Tony Stewart's replacement next year. So who knows, guys? Who knows? Uh, fingers crossed that we might get another Boyer pre-order, but who knows? Maybe he might, might end up in the cancellation list very soon. Um, another Brandon Jones car has been canceled. Is a next year car that is only canceled in the 124 scale. So really cool just seeing that that car just got canceled in one scale. So it looks like the 164 version will be made, which kind of was a surprise. I really thought that this car was not going to make MOQ, but uh, the 124 version is not going to be made, guys. Which is, I mean, uh, not really a big loss because you know the um, the, the Xfinity diecasts aren't really that um, high quality with uh, with the diecasts. I mean, I know the Chevrolets do have uh, the opening hoods and opening. Uh, trunks and all that, but um, still though, um, the Xfinity series is kind of going downhill, so I can see why um, this car didn't really make it. Plus, Brandon Jones ain't really that, uh, the, he, he's not uh, a really noticeable Xfinity driver, which is very unfortunate right there. And the next one, guys, uh, ironically, we got some more 88 diecast. Oh no, but uh, it, the more, don't worry guys, this is Xfinity diecast, so Dale Jr.'s, uh, Dale Jr.'s cars are safe. However, though, these are Junior Motorsports cars, so we got Kevin Harvick's Nature Chili car. I kind of had a feeling that this car was going to be canceled. It was kind of very underrated, and God only knows what the heck Nature Chili is. Um, just a, it's just one of those cars that has a random sponsor. Uh, 
Tank scheme is alright, but I can see why this car got cancelled. And the next one, guys, I know my good friend PWP2933 is going to be very ticked off about this car, as he's a big fan of um, Regan Smith and Dale's Pale Ale. Especially, he's a big fan of Dale's Pale Ale schemes. Uh, but similar to last year's car, guys, this car is canceled in the 124 scale, which is awesome because if you guys remember last year when he drove the 7 Dale's Pale car, that was canceled both scales. So it looks like we might have the 160 war version for now. Who knows? Line up always update um, the cancellation list, and we might have both scales canceled. But fingers crossed, guys. I'm hoping that the 160 war car is going to get produced as a 124 scale version. Of course, um, um, it's another dreadful year for the Regan Smith cars. And uh, overall, guys, cancellation wise, um, uh, yeah, there were some disappointing diecasts for sure, but um, a lot of them weren't really too much of a surprise. So that's for right there. But now we're getting on to the last topic, guys. It's a very brief topic before I wrap up this video. It's uh, I'll probably uh, wrap it up really quick right here. But let's just say we do got our possibly. I think this might be our first Ford picture. As you guys remember, a lot of people wondered what is going on with the Ford diecast. What's going on? But we do have some prototype pictures, and one of them actually came from a NASCAR driver who is um, who was entitled for this picture. It is Jeffrey Earnhardt's Can Am car. And this is a prototype car, but a lot of people got excited, like, oh my god, this car made MOQ. I think this car is almost at the borderline of making MOQ, guys, since they are making prototypes. But man, does this car look awesome right here, the Jeffrey Earnhardt diecast. This car looks really cool, especially with these chrome wheels, man. I'm really glad that, um, you know, um, the 32, um, the, the, the render for this car looks really nice, but uh, man, this car looks really, really cool. And, uh, real life scale. Even though for, heck, for a prototype, uh, these look really awesome, but another thing that really caught my eye is these new Ford molds, guys, so we are going to uh, be seeing these new Ford molds, hopefully sometime around the next few months, I'm hoping by um, by the time of uh, spring ends, maybe, but um, who knows, guys, who knows, uh, tell me what you guys think of these new Fords that we got for this year, and uh, heck, that Jeff and our diecast, what can I say, it looks pretty awesome. Other well, than that, guys, this has been an episode of NASCAR IKS News. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, please give this video a good comment, like it. If you guys haven't already, I highly encourage you guys to check out NASCAR IKS News or any more of the latest NASCAR IKS News to come. Uh, check out uh, any of my recent videos. I've done a couple diecast reviews. Uh, probably going to do an episode of diecast countdown. I know I missed one last week, guys. Uh, last month, I did miss marches, but not really much to happen, so... I, that's why I didn't really post it because uh, not many, uh, it was mostly I got the same revolts from February. So expect a new video from the Diecast Countdown in this, um, for um, this month coming up and so forth. And of course I got the 8500 next month guys, so I am going, still going to be um, kind of active on NASCAR Diecast news. But um, once middle of May hits guys, I will be taking a little break on YouTube since, you know, the month of May is a nice relaxation after finals and all that. But, yeah, guys, we're really looking forward to that, and hopefully all you guys can come and check us out. Me, Race Day 2011, David Land, Joe Donahue, and uh, M Race 89, and PWB 2933. Lots of us are going to be there, so if you guys can be in Indy, I highly encourage you guys to come and check us out and so forth. But anyways, guys, wrapping this up right here, this has been the NASCAR IKS News. This is a Rich Big Rice signing off. So long for now, everybody. Take care and good night.